Rangers take on the Islanders. Now, both games can be seen on ABC, and our Rangers coverage Sunday will start at 2.30 on 98.7 with Isles coverage on 10.50. And joining us now, the head of the league, the NHL commissioner, Gary Bettman, always nice, and comes on the show whenever we ask. Gary, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How you doing? Um, great, guys. It's nice to be with you. Thanks for inviting me on the eve of what's uh, going to be a very special weekend. So let me let me start with that, Gary. When when this idea was hatched to play hockey in in big stadiums, did you ever envision it would be this successful? We hoped. Right. <laughs> the, uh, if you go back to the first Winter Classic that we played in Buffalo, uh, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago, and the game ended in a shootout, and it was snowing, and people were just going nuts at the experience, we figured, okay, we, we seem to have uncovered something that would give our fans a very special and unique connection to the game, and at the same time, give our players an experience that they would love. And, and, you know, I think we've now done somewhere around 37, give or take, games outdoors. And they've all been different and tremendous, but all of them well-received. And, you know, in a 24-hour period this weekend at MetLife, we're probably going to have somewhere between 130 and 140,000 people watching hockey, watching a Jonas Brothers concert tomorrow night before the game between the Flyers and the Devils. We we have fan fests in the parking lot pregame. I mean, it's really intended to be a celebration of the sport, uh, and it's gotten bigger and better mm -hmm. each time. You know, what I love about it, Gary, is the fact that you were able to get teams that wouldn't be eligible for a Winter Classic. You were in Carolina last year, the Ducks and the, and the uh, Kings getting a chance to play at Dodger Stadium a few years back. But what's the challenge of the balance of we want to keep the uh, Winter Classic special, so we don't want to oversaturate it, but we also want to try to include as many teams as possible. Is there a challenge in balancing that kind of act? Well, it, it, it's a balancing act. I'm, I'm not sure it's as much a challenge as it is we have lots of opportunities. It depends on the facilities that are available. Uh, we, you know, sometimes an NFL stadium doesn't work uh, for the Winter Classic because teams are now still playing into January. Uh, we have to take into account geography. We also have to take into account what stadiums are winterized. Uh, but in the final analysis, we try and move it around. I think after these games, 30 of our 32 teams will have participated in at least one outdoor game, and we're going to work hard on getting those last two to get the opportunity that the others have had. And again, there's no exact science to this. Um, we have to take into account a whole host of factors, uh, but what's been clear is wherever we go, these games are well received and we fill the buildings. Now, whenever we ask a, a parent, you know, do they have a favorite child, they give the same stock answer. Well, they're, they're, I don't have a favorite. It's nonsense. Everybody has a favorite. But of all of these stadium series games, it sounds like you have an affection for the, the one in Buffalo. Is there one that you embraced the most, that you enjoyed the most? It well, you know, they, again, they've all been different. Playing at the big house uh, with the Red Wings and the Leafs at, in the snow, I think it was like 18 or 20 degrees, and there was a foot of snow falling, and that was in front of over 100,000 people. It was pretty cool. Um, you know, I, I don't like playing without fans, but what we did during COVID at uh, Lake Tahoe was pretty unique. And again... So I don't have a favorite because when you see the way we dress up the stadiums and you go back and look at old pictures, we, we try to take on the characteristics of the community or the city that we're in and the teams that are playing. You know, we, we played Yankee Stadium a couple of games. We played City Field. Uh, and each time they, those took on a New York vibe. Uh, you're going to have to tune in to see what we did to MetLife Stadium for these two games. And again, it, it's the whole event, taking the game outdoors, subjecting it to the elements. You know, we typically play in buildings that seat 
20,000 or less. But to see this many hockey fans, where anywhere between 40,000 and over 100,000, all coming together and tailgating and celebrating the community that's hockey is special. And we don't think we've overdone it. You know, you hear critics say, well, I tune it on TV, and but if you've been to one of these, you'll never forget it. And Gary, of course, the, the Flyer the Devil game tomorrow is going to be the third game of a triple header on ABC. And the Rangers Islanders yeah. will be on ABC uh, at 3 o'clock on Sunday. Just talk about just what the how expansive this new television deal has been with ESPN and ABC and with TNT. You know, Connor McDavid's going to be the 3 o'clock game uh, on Saturday. There was a lot of networks that didn't want to touch, as great the, as the players were, Canadian teams. How, how, uh, how many doors have opened up with this new television contract with ESPN, ABC, and TNT? Uh, it's, it's been incredible. Uh, listen, NBC had us for, you know, a decade and a half, and we're grateful for all they did. But being back on ESPN, being with the Walt Disney Company on ABC and what we do with ESPN+, Plus, being on Turner, uh, we're getting scheduled, we're getting promoted, and we're getting covered, particularly on SportsCenter, in ways that we hadn't been for the period of time we weren't with them. Uh, our ratings are up dramatically. Uh, over the term that we've been with them now, we're into the third season, and we are thrilled at how this relationship is working out. And I think if you talk to the people at ESPN and at Turner, they would tell you they're equally thrilled. These have been great partnerships. And with with more coverage and more platforms, as I said, we're getting better promoted, but we're also being able to schedule better as well. And yes, um, both, both of our partners uh, understand that hockey fans love to see great hockey and great players, the stars. And just because Edmonton doesn't rate on Nielsen doesn't mean uh, people in the United States shouldn't be given an opportunity to see Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews play. Gary Bedman, the NHL commissioner, is our guest here on the Michael K. Show Stadium Series tomorrow and Sunday at MetLife. Now, when we put out that you were going to be on, a lot of people on social media have reached out. And one thing that has bothered people, you know, the Sunday game is the Islanders and the Rangers. Gary, that's the first time that they're meeting this year, and people don't like that. They go, why aren't these two teams meeting sooner? What's your answer to that? Uh, it's going to be a pretty special day. Everybody should tune in. <laughs> you know, the, the schedule is hard, and, and there's always the debate, should we have more divisional games at the expense of interconference games? And, and the response to that is we, all, we only, only play 82 games. And if we had more divisional play, then you might not see every team in your building at least once a season. And, you know, when I talk to teams about that and I say, you know, if, if you're a hockey fan in the New York, New Jersey area, how are you going to feel if you don't see the Stanley Cup champion in your building or you don't see Connor McDavid in your building at least once? And it's a balancing act. And, you know, we tried doing it the other way for a couple of years, and the response we got was we we think it's important that every team play every other team home and away at least once. And so, you know, it's something we continue to look at, but we find that you can't make everyone mm -hmm. happy uh, all the time. Now, uh, I did a poll on my podcast, and it came out 60-40 in favor of divisional play, which tells you that it's actually – you know, pretty close. Do people want to see Connor McDavid in the building every, uh, in every building, or do they want to see more divisional games? What upsets me, Gary, though, because of the addition of Seattle and Vegas, you had to take away some divisional games. I guess it was last year, the year before, um, the Battle of Alberta had three instead of four. Rangers Islanders last year three instead of four. Is there a way to come up with not having the addition of the expansion teams and adding the games to the West come at the expense of in division games? Well, except if, if we did that, you wouldn't see the Stanley Cup champion necessarily in the East. 
And so, the, you know, and if you did the poll, if we were doing the schedule the way you suggested, it would then come out 60-40 the other way. And so we, we, this is something we monitor on an ongoing basis. You know, if we added more games to the schedule, which I'm not advocating, we could fix the problem. It's something that we continue to look at and internally in debate. And maybe we really have to de-emphasize conference play and go to more division play. So, again, I understand the concern. I'm sympathetic to it. But I also know that if you don't get to see certain teams, you're going to be pretty unhappy about it. And so that's what we're wrestling with. Now, Gary, will the Arizona Coyotes end up in Salt Lake City or do they stay in North Phoenix? What's your plans there? Well, Alex Morello, who I spoke to as recently as yesterday, uh, is telling me that he is confident that he's going to acquire a piece of property that will enable him to build a spectacular arena and development around it. And, you know, it's pretty complicated, expensive stuff, but he's committed to doing it. Uh, we think Arizona is a terrific market. Uh, just ask Weston Matthews, who says he never would have played hockey if he never went to a Coyotes game. Uh, and so we're trying to work our way through it. Uh, playing at Moody's, which is about 5,000 people, isn't ideal. Uh, it's not ultimately long-term fair to the players, although I will tell you, it is an incredible fan experience having done it myself. Now, there's expansion. Right? Utah, very hot for a team. You hear Houston, obviously Quebec City has a building ready trying to get the Nordiques back. I mean, is 34 teams in the league a, a viable possibility? If you're asking me, do I think we have the talent for more teams? Yes. Our, our players at all levels have never been better, more skilled. Games never been more competitive. We're, we're not focused on expansion. I'm, what you hear me talking about is the expressions of interest we're getting, and we're getting them from all over the place, which is very gratifying. But we don't have a mandate to expand. I'm not going to do it as we've done in the past any time for the foreseeable future saying anybody who wants an expansion team submit an application by this date we listen uh and you know I'm, i have a pretty open door policy as you guys know with my accessibility whenever you ask me to come on so people want to come and talk to us we talk to them but as of right now i don't see us going to worrying about what number would make sense listen when we expanded to vegas we had an odd number of teams for a couple of years to me it, yes i think we have the talent but i don't think we're under any mandate right now to be expanding guy i'm curious about vegas you know this this question has been batted back and forth for years but that was always you know the hot button for every league they didn't want to go to vegas the golden knights have been very successful it looks like the yeah. raiders have been successful and the, the Super Bowl was very successful in Vegas. Has there been a downside to having a team in Vegas? Do you have to monitor things more closely when it comes to the gambling? Anything happening like that? Well, as I think everybody knows, there's now gambling virtually everywhere. Yeah right? So in terms of sports betting. And sports betting on hockey is really the concern I have that we monitor on a daily basis everywhere. So, you know, the fact that there are casinos, the guys that, that live in Vegas now, you know, live off the strip. What we learned, and, you know, it's funny, we, we were, there were a lot of skeptics and critics when we went to Vegas, uh, and we were the first ones there. And then, well, you know, it, the Golden Knights were not only usually successful from a business standpoint, but the community really adopted the team and the players as their own. It, it is incredible how bound that community is to the Golden Knights and vice versa. And so, you know, we, we know that the people who live there full time don't live on the strip. They have lives like we all do in, in New York, you know, especially if you don't live in Manhattan. And they were looking for something as a city identification other than the Strip. And it's been an incredible success story. And I suppose imitation is the highest form of flattery. But we're glad we're there. And we're glad we went there first, despite all the skepticism at the time. And you did mention, you know, gambling is essentially legal everywhere. Uh, has that been an issue? Have you, like, had to intensify no. examining everything, Gary? Every single line movement, stuff like that? 
We were doing that even when it wasn't legal. Okay. And so, you know, everywhere, because it, it had been legal in Vegas forever. We, we have, you know, the appropriate security apparatus to monitor. We, we've disciplined one player, and I consider that, A, a sign that a, we're watching and we know when there's an issue. And if you look at some of the other leagues, you know, they, they, they've had more players that they've had to focus on. I think our security department and our clubs, when it comes to education in terms of what the players can and can't do, uh, and the players' responsiveness has been great. And again, yes, we do monitor very closely. You know, real ugly situation, Gary, with the uh, the 2018 uh, Canadian junior team, and four of those players were currently playing in the NHL to take a leave of absence. What is going to be their eligibility moving forward as as their uh, court dates and the trial eventually come to a head here? Well, they're all separated from their teams, and uh, I think they're all free agents after this season, and we're going to have to just monitor uh, their uh, proceeding through the judicial channels, uh, and at this point, there's nothing for us to do, and I frankly don't envision them playing as long as they're dealing with defending themselves against the, the criminal charges. I, I, I want to piggyback on what Don just said, because I've always wondered this about all the commissioners and all the sports, Gary. So, these guys have been accused of horrendous things, but a lot of instances where there have been false accusations. Is is, is there a temptation on your part and the team's part to say, hey, they are innocent until proven guilty, they should be allowed to play? Is that a thin line for you guys to, to straddle? You know, I, I don't want to comment on the specifics of these cases for obvious reasons, uh -huh. but the answer to that question may depend on how much information you have. I got you. So you might right. know more than we know. <laughs> gotcha. Um, that, is, that is conceivable. Okay. <laughs> Gary, uh, Rob Manfred made some news yesterday announcing that this will be his last contract and that he's going to step away uh, at the age of 70. When, when his contract is up, he'll be 70. You're, you're 71, obviously a very young 71. Have you given any thought to how long you want to stay as the NHL commissioner? You, you know, I, actually, I'm, I'm a little older than Rob, and I've been doing this longer. When he made that announcement, I started feeling very old. <laughs> um, and thank, thank you thank you for saying I'm energetic. <laughs> you know, this isn't something, I don't think a public-facing job like this, um, and one that requires the energy, just, not just to be around the game and the league and everybody, who's associated with, but portraying the energy of the game. I can't do this forever, and I'm not going to set a timeline now, but I don't, I, I'm not doing this forever, okay? And so I haven't focused on an exact date, and I, I don't want to yet give people a date to look forward to. <laughs> but but at, the end of the, at the end of the day, there comes a point where uh, you should say, you know what, it, it, it's time to turn it over to somebody a little younger. Were you surprised, because a lot of people I've spoken to in baseball today, Gary, were surprised that Rob said this is it, and that he put the, you know, the, the finish line right there for everybody to see. Would you ever do it like that, or would you say, okay, I'm, I'm walking away tomorrow? My, my I, listen, I don't know why Rob did it the way he did it, and he's a good friend, and I respect him, and he's really smart. Um, I, I think when it's time to go, then I'm going to say it's time to go. Gotcha. I, I don't think I don't think I, I don't think I need uh, a build up. I'm not looking for a victory tour or a goodbye tour at the end. And so, you know, when I think I've had enough, I'll tell the owners, and then we'll move on. All right, Gary. I got to know this. Do you sit in a suite at these games, or do you actually brave the cold? Oh, oh, come yeah. on. No, 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 I actually, to the extent I'm entertaining people, we have a suite because we have a lot of business partners and, and other people that we want to entertain, but always a suite with outdoor seats, and that's part of the experience. So, yes, uh, I'll be largely outside, occasionally in, inside being a host. I, I was always on the fence, Gary. Last one for me about the NHL players going to the Olympics. Um, I, I, I get it. It's a lot of fun for those for the players and and all that. But I also, as an NHL fan, you know, hate to see hockey disappear on the NHL level for you know the 14, 16 days that it has to. Um, just talk about 20, the 2026 going to Italy and how much more control will you have to be able to promote your sport 
while your athletes are playing in the Olympics? You know, that's a great question. So the bottom line is there are pros and cons of going to the Olympics. And I would venture to say that, that our international best on best uh, will rival anything in any sport, if not exceed it. Having said the fact that there are pros and cons, the reason ultimately we made the effort to get to the point where we could do it is our players have consistently told us that this is important to them. And so this was a player first, player desire that we were trying to fulfill and, and we're doing it. We're gonna mix it up with some World Cups in the two years in between the Olympics. So we'll do 26 Olympics, 28 World Cup, 28 Olymp uh, 26, yeah, 28 World Cup, 30 Olympics, 32 World Cup. And to begin giving people a flavor for <clears throat> international competition, best on best, we're doing a Four Nations tournament next winter in season, our in season tournament, and that'll be uh, Finland, Sweden, Canada, and the U.S. Kind of in a year to, to try and put together a full World Cup wasn't practical, but we figured a, a mini tournament with Four Nations would really get people excited and focused on how good our international competition is. You know, our player base is probably the most international of the North American sports and our players love to represent their countries and frankly anything we do to continue to encourage countries all around the world that develop world-class hockey players to continue to do so is a positive for the game and will help grow the game worldwide. All right, the NHL Stadium Series tomorrow it starts at MetLife. Devils host the Flyers at 8 and on Sunday at 3 Rangers take on the Islanders. Both games can be seen on ABC and our Rangers coverage Sunday starts at 2.30 on 98.7 with the Islanders coverage on 10.50. Gary, I hope it's a rousing success. And don't, and, don't, and, and don't forget the Jonas Brothers giving a concert at 6.30 tomorrow night. Come on. All right. That, that, you know, that, that's yeah. more of an enticement to show up. Thank you, Gary. We appreciate okay. it. Yep. Thanks a lot, man. Great, great to be with you guys. Thank you. You got it. That's Gary Bettman, the Stadium Series tomorrow. Hey, do you want to...